lot of the team came on post pandemic. So I think that really gave us a, you know, a chance to be kind of native to remote work and really understanding uh, how to connect. When I say rapid, precise delivery of goods, you probably think, oh yeah, that's e-commerce. We all take it for granted now. But we're about to talk to the founder of a company that does that for a much different set of reasons, and I would say a much more important set of reasons. And along the way, they've learned some unique lessons about remote work. Joel Eiffel is founder and chief innovation officer of Dash Systems. Joel, what does Dash do? We do precision commercial airdrop systems. So simply put, we take existing cargo aircraft, we give them the ability to launch and land cargo mid-flight, making air cargo more efficient, more accessible, moving useful loads of aircraft, so thousands of pounds in a given flight. So how do you get the goods down to the ground? So we make kind of uh, two main components. We make a software suite that really automates and makes the airdrop process much more safe and reliable. And then we basically make little systems that launch cargo out the side door of existing aircraft. And finally, what are you dropping from the sky? We call them pods, these custom vehicles uh, that have a, a little parachute that allows a safe, soft landing. Now you had a career before this that set you up to do exactly what you're doing now, didn't you? Yeah, I'm an engineer by degree. Uh, my first job was working on precision guided munitions, better known as smart bombs, and I really wanted to re-engineer that technology for a peaceful purpose. When you are looking at your market, it's not about getting a faster, easier delivery to more suburban neighborhoods. You're talking about a, a higher calling. Yeah, the company started uh, in humanitarian deliveries, you know, delivering to impossible situations just days after hurricanes. Really now we're expanding into commercial deliveries, a remote island mountain, any place that's hard to reach, I believe they deserve fast uh, transportation just like we get in major cities. So here you are with a company that is rooted in the idea of being at distance a lot, uh, being in areas where perhaps there is little or no connectivity. Was remote work that much of a shift in your mindset at Dash when we all had to take it on? From the inception of the company, we always knew that remote work uh, was going to be a reality just by the nature of aviation. You know, when you're in the sky, you generally don't have a internet or communication connection. Uh, same in disaster locations, these remote locations, you know, you can't rely on having good internet or good comm. So, you know, just kind of took that into consideration that yes, we're always gonna have people in the field. And I think some of that just, you know, comes to a, a sense of trust that you know they're still working even if you can't see them. <laughs> yeah, so this is what's interesting is you already have a team that knows Many of us are not here. We're out far away. How do you maintain and keep the culture going in a company like that? Maybe this even predates the remote work era. Uh, one where you've always got a distributed team that isn't always face to face. Yeah, you know, um, when the pandemic started, we actually tripled in size. Uh, so a lot of the team came on post pandemic. So I think that really gave us a, you know, a chance to be kind of native to remote work and really understanding uh, how to connect, uh, you know, just finding all those various tools and experimenting until we found what worked for us. You uh, have talked about how fast you've grown and in the jaws of a pandemic mode. Uh, what's recruitment been like? Some some leaders have told me it's almost better because we're now so free and open to look to find people anywhere and base them anywhere. And others have said, yeah, that works, but it's a lot harder in other ways because the face-to-face -face component got a lot more difficult. What's it been like to grow so much at this time in history? Yeah, I think it's all of the above. Uh, it does open up the candidate pool, let you uh, you have to be more efficient just in, in terms of getting meetings in, you know, meeting people on their lunch breaks, etc. I think the biggest one for us is also making sure you're solving for culture, finding people that are going to fit into the organization. I think that's the thing, you know, I keep my eye on most. All right, so tell me about return to office. Everyone's trying to juggle with, you know, we start with five days and then we try to solve for how we're going to have, what part of that's remote, what part's hybrid, and what part is your call. What are you communicating to your team about how they should arrange those five days between Monday and Friday going forward? And you know, kind of kind of need to what we're doing. Uh, we're a hybrid office. You know, we're building physical products, so you have to be in there to turn wrenches. You know, we fly airplanes, so we have to be in there, have the team in the airplane. I think right now we're still solving that experiment. You know, around having core days. What core days should they be? A lot of it's just being flexible and being willing to try different systems, uh, but we haven't had that resounding message to be in the office five days a week. I don't think that will ever be the right long-term move. We used to refer to a younger generation as being digital natives, and I think that term can evolve, and they are now hybrid remote natives. So I just think that there's a, a natural 
demand that was coming anyway, pandemic or not, and like so many other things, it just accelerated us getting there. Yeah, exactly. I think breweries, this was a forcing function for a lot of companies saying, hey, you know, they were dragging their feet, they were really cautious to know, you know, we have to do this. And once you do it, you see the performance, the output is the same. And then really the question, why would you go back? Why would you take all that overhead of having everyone in the office five days a week? So let's talk about uh, going forward now as we wrap up. Uh, we're talking now in March of 2022. What are some interesting milestones you've got coming up ahead this year? I think the biggest one for us, we're uh, really excited to announce very soon we'll begin commercial deliveries, uh, starting with medical supplies for COVID. Uh, really just getting out there showing, hey, this is possible, it's safe, it's legal. Uh, 2022 is the year to do it. So Joel, you guys have something that most offices don't have, which is airplane days. We don't have those at CNET. Tell me what they are. Yeah, so in the nature of our business, you know, we own an aircraft, uh, we go out and test uh, or perform, uh, and say, pilot work. Uh, so we have to fly the airplane, call them airplane days, test days. Uh, you know, by the nature of hardware engineering, you usually have to end up touching that physical product and there's no way around it. So we rode the, the crew up in our airplane, we go fly out, perform an airdrop, come back. Uh, they're long days, but a lot of fun. And that's the ultimate in remote work, I got to tell you. Yeah, you know, we haven't solved for remote pilots yet, so you still got a pilot in the in the cockpit. <laughs>